This video presents assorted materials for the Comp360 Programming Languages course, including multiple inheritance, generics, and nested methods. Please remember that the second exam in Comp360 will be Friday, March 20th. It will cover all the material presented since exam one. The exam will be at two o'clock and will run till three o'clock. You must be on Blackboard at that time to take the exam. In preparation for the exam, you should read chapter 10 of the textbook. There are three, maybe four, pillars of object-oriented programming, inheritance, encapsulation, abstraction, and polymorphism. I want to talk a little bit more about inheritance. While Java does not support it, C++ and several other object-oriented languages allow a class to inherit from more than one parent class. In this example, the class SEAL inherits from the class Mammal and the class Sea Creature. So the SEAL class has all the methods and class instance variables of both classes. This can be particularly useful if a class needs the features of two different classes. For instance, imagine you're creating a program that has a GUI, a graphical user interface, and will support multiple threads. You might want to support the and inherit from the JFrame class to get all the GUI features, and you might also want to inherit from the thread class to get all the multiple threading features. In Java, you can't do both, but in other languages, you might be able to inherit from both classes. There are some potential difficulties with multiple inheritance. The big problems occur when there is some collision between the two parent classes. Imagine both classes have a method with the same name and parameters, or the same signature. An object of the child class that inherits from both those parents might have to call that method. When, it's, when it calls the method, which one, which parent's method is used? That's somewhat difficult to define. Java doesn't support multiple inheritance because it provides several difficulties. It does try to provide a feature somewhat sort of kind of like it called interfaces. Uh, an interface provides a list of methods that the class must create. This is not quite like multiple inheritance, where those classes already exist defined in the parent class. Here's an example of a Java interface. It specifies that any object that implements the uncle interface must provide both the rabbit and the bunny methods defined as shown. In the interface, the method header is given followed by a semicolon. The definition of the implementation is not shown in the interface. The method must provide the definition of those methods. Back in the old days, when Java was first created, it didn't use generics. Uh, certain collection classes and other classes, such as ArrayList and HashMap, would take objects as parameters and return objects of the class object. In this example, ArrayList uh, has an we're creating an object dinosaur, uh, and we don't specify the type of objects that will be in the ArrayList, so they will just be objects of the class object. Uh, frog is a widget. We can put frog into the ArrayList dinosaur, and then later we can get the object from the array list. When we get it, we must cast it to the type widget because Java doesn't know what type of object was in that array list. If you remember, object is the ancestor of all classes in Java. Even if you don't specify that you're extending a class, you are always extending the class object. Uh, so if a parameter of a method takes an object of the class capital O object, that means you can accept any sort of object because every object that you make in Java is an object of the class object. 
And of course, if a method returns an object of the class capital O object, it means it can return any sort of object because any sort of object always inherits from the class object. The problem is that uh, Java doesn't always know what kind of type it is. Now, there are advantages if you want to have an array list holding objects of multiple different types, then inheriting from object works perfectly well for this. Uh, but one of the disadvantages is Java doesn't know what type of object is going to be returned. You must always cast it, as shown in the previous example, to the proper type. Uh, there can be mistakes when you cast things. If you cast something perhaps to a parent class instead of to the child class that it really is, it'll work, but it may not be what you want it to be. Uh, also, type checks have to be made at runtime as you are uh, casting things from one type to another. Several versions of Java uh, Go, they added generics that allows the programmer to specify the type of an object in a collection. Here, in a modern version of ArrayList, it specified that the objects going into the ArrayList and the objects coming out of the ArrayList will always be of the type widget. So Bird is an ArrayList that holds widgets. Note that in Bird, we put the uh, type there in the greater than less than brackets on the left, and then we just put a pair of empty less than or greater than brackets on the right. Uh, frog is an object of which is before, and you can put frog into the bird array list, and Java knows that it's a frog and that it's going to take that frog is a widget and it must has to be a widget. When you return an object from the array list bird, Java knows that it must be a widget because only widgets can be in that array list. Using generics ensures that Java knows what kind of objects are being put into the collection and what kind of objects are returned. Java is a strongly typed language and it helps to know what type of objects are going in and out of any sort of method system. You don't have to cast objects returned when you specify the generic because Java knows what it will be. Of course, this only works for collections that are all the same type. You can't mix the type of objects in a collection like you can if you define them to be objects of the class object. On the other hand, generally, most of the time, particularly in my history, when you create a collection of objects, they're almost always the same type. Generics are implemented in the compiler, and it doesn't really change the operation of the underlying methods that use them. Uh, Java enforces the type of data you put into the collection. If you say this is an array list of widgets, then you can only put objects of the type of widget into the array list. And when you get an object from the array list, Java knows that it must be a widget because you can only put widgets in there, therefore only widgets can come out. Another feature of languages that are not uh, Java is nested methods, or sometimes called nested procedures. The Pascal language supports nested procedures. A nested method is a method that's defined inside another method. So its definition is inside the definition of one method, you have another method, and you can only call it from that enclosing method. The nested method can access all the local variables and parameters of the closing method. Here's an example of a nested method. The trout is the parent method or enclosing method, and then inside the trout method is stretch. Stretch is a nested method defined inside the trout method. And note that stretch can define its own local variables, and it can access the parameters such as minnow and the, and the local variables of trout such as tuna and shark. Uh, the scoping of the stretch method includes the scope of all the trout uh, methods. Anything that trout can access, stretch can access. Also, stretch can have its own local variables, such as bass, that can only be accessed in the stretch method and not in the trout or any other method. So, that's supporting some of the three 
pillars of, or four pillars of object-oriented programming, remember there's inheritance, the ability to extend one class from another, encapsulation and abstraction, the ability to hide the inner workings of a method or class from other classes that use it, and polymorphism, the ability of Java to uh, use multiple methods depending on the parameters and types that are calling it. Read chapter 10 of the textbook to get more information ready for the test. The test is Friday, March 20th from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock.